The music that you hear below my voice is an original composition. Uh, if you wish to purchase this music, you can follow a link in the description box, and in doing so, you would be supporting this channel. Thanks very much. Some things stand out when I watch uh, Boykin from last year. Uh, one is application, you know, how the Ravens use him or how frequently they target him. It's pretty infrequent, and some of that might have to do with him being a bit raw or just a rookie, or whatever goes with that. Uh, but they don't look to him. He's very, very um, infrequently even part of the progression, much less a, a number one read. Um, and the frustrating thing about that is a lot of times he's open and deep and we just miss him. Uh, the receiver comes to the line at this point, kind of reading the safety coverage, certainly reading what's across from him, but he's got one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. You'd like to think uh, going into 2020 that they might take a shot here. Um, you got a, all three tight ends kind of bunched to that side. Safety playing that side and not soon, not too long after the ball's snapped, you're going to see this safety come up either to get on top of Andrews or Hurst. Andrews is what it looks like. Uh, and uh, Boykin on this post uh, beats his man inside. You can see the defender turning and, and running. Um, and real clear separation here and lots of space to throw to. Time in the pocket for the quarterback. And uh, as I said, Boykin is not part of the read. I'm sure he, he came to the line of scrimmage anticipating that he might have uh, this route open. The quarterback should, should as well. Um, you can see from um, the end zone view here, just looks to me like Lamar does not read that and that he's really intent on Nick. Um, you can see right there. We end up settling for this little over the ball sit here. And some of that might speak to the, the confidence that they have in Boykin and how they want to run the offense uh, or revolve the offense around these tight ends. Uh, but I think perhaps a larger point is chemistry. There's just no um, chemistry apparent between the play callers and Boykin, uh, the quarterback and Boykin, not typically. And you get one-on-one -on, -one on the outside with a safety to the other side of the field. That's got to click. That's got to click in your mind that you could have a deep shot. This play really illustrates um, how comfortable uh, Lamar is with, with Andrews. Their, their rapport um, compared to the, the uh, connection he has with Boykin. Even though on this play they are reading this deep safety. And as the deep, deep safety comes up, to, to um, or comes down, as it were, to get Andrews, you can see Boykin uh, turn his head right there, finds the safety, knows that he's clear, he's going to turn, look for the football. Uh, if that ball's out in front of him, he might run and go, uh, as, as in score. So that needs to, to be augmented in the offseason. There's no question. Boykin's going to have to insinuate his way into a situation if he needs to, Invite himself along with uh, with uh, Marquise and Lamar when they throw in the offseason if they don't extend an invitation to him. He's got to get involved, and they have to get him involved um, so that they can build this rapport, this chemistry. You can see this is this is a big miss, a big miss um, in, in an important spot. Obviously, it's a playoff game. A lot of this probably goes to Lamar, you know, just being um, – and the offense and the play calling being so centered around the middle of the field, so centered around these tight ends. But again, you see this missed opportunity where the safety's coming up, and it's another situation where we should be reading the uh, middle of the field safety in this case. As he comes up to get Nick, you know, some of that is due to the uh, reading of the quarterback, some of that's due to the route, but he's got time in the pocket here, and you can see Miles turn, expecting that he might get the football. I'm not suggesting that Miles is setting the world on fire uh, last year with his route running uh, or that he's consistently open, but, but it just doesn't feel as if he's part of this offense uh, for the most part, and I'm sure there's reasons for, for that. Um, this play turns out fine. I mean, <laughs> Nick almost scores, but it really is because of a, a nice throw kind of to the, to the inside here and a missed tackle, you know, and you have this opportunity deep with, with Boykin that, that
when we talk about application, you know, how the Ravens use Boyk, and this is him at a, the bottom of our screen, I, a, a large portion of the time, he is basically a runoff route, meaning he's there to clear space for somebody else, tight ends or what have you, in the middle of the field. Um, I This route bothers me a lot. You know, it's clear. It's just like he's being coached. Just get upfield. You know, there's nothing, no kind of move um, at the line. He's just running off that coverage. Um, it's a terrible, I think it's a terrible design, that, and it leads to really bad results or it may not lead to, but ultimately there, there's a bad result. There's a pick here. They've got Boyle in the slot. Boyle gets mashed at the line. He's supposed, supposed to be able to hold this safety, and I don't know how you would expect Nick to do that and not have Miles do that, right? This guy doesn't care about Nick Boyle getting vertical. And as a consequence, he's just kind of running, screaming towards that, that uh, uh, over that, that, that uh, Andrews is running, and he gets himself in position to get this tipped ball or this deflected ball here. So Boykin's route, you know, it runs off this guy. It doesn't do anything to influence the safety. And instead, you have Nick Boyle inside, and it, ultimately, you get this pick. You get the safety in a position where he doesn't have to worry about any kind of speed or any kind of vertical. And it may be the import of this particular play that's influencing me or um, the result of the play. But I don't, I don't get this, this uh, play design in terms of where they line Miles up and Nick up. And I don't, I don't get the application of Boykin here at all. Here you see him being asked to run a vertical and run off coverage, and it's very effective here to clear space for the tight end underneath. Uh, real nice play design, but it's clear Hurst is the, the uh, intended target here. It works out. But, uh, uh, yeah, he's, he's very successful here in that he holds the corner, holds the deep safety. Um, uh, Marquise runs a uh, linebacker to that side, and you get space. Um, but it would be nice moving forward to see Boykin being schemed open um, and being, again, part of the offense. You can see even on this play, there's space here. Uh, that's not the route he's called to run. But if he's got more time uh, in with the quarterback and with the coordinator this year, you might see him uh, run a dig here and sit this down in this space. And you might see the quarterback find him, even though he's waiting on Hurst to come across. This is a design deep ball to Miles, uh, where he is first in the progression. I like him off the line of scrimmage. I need him to run every route uh, from the line of scrimmage that way um, with urgency. Not just when he's in, in the uh, progression early or uh, uh, the first first read, but all the time. Uh, I like this hard plan, out, plan step outside. Does a great job here getting rid of the um, DB's hands. And then swimming quickly with the left. I also think he slows his gait as he turns to find the football. Uh, it could be it's a bit of an overthrow too. Um, uh, it could be a combination of those two things. But it looks like he slows his gait to me just a little right there, right there when he when he turns to find the football. It may seem as if I'm laying a lot of the blame uh, for for a sort of lackluster rookie year at the feet of. The, the coordinator or the or the coaches or even the quarterback, but Miles has got a lot of work to do. He's the target again here deep, and to me, as he runs this post, he is not at all sharp out of this break. In fact, it's quite round. He also slows his gait. I'm convinced of that. As he comes out of that break, and there's just no way uh, he should be allowing this DB to get in front of him, out in front of him, and under uh it sort of beat him to the spot. And I have a feeling that's a pretty good throw by Lamar if he isn't round out of this break. And he doesn't sort of slow there. He may even, even be early with that plant step. He's definitely, definitely soft at, at the top of it. The use of a slant was not really prevalent uh, last year in the Ravens' offense. You see Miles at the bottom of our screen here. Uh, might be wrong on this, but I believe this is the only slant route he ran last year. Certainly he's the target here, although uh, if you watch it from the opposite side, you do see Lamar do a little pump um, 
to to the back out of the out of the backfield that may be to influence this linebacker. Um, I, I believe that's the case. Uh, what you'll notice is as uh, Miles uh, makes his cut here, he allows this ball to get past his frame, not even with his frame, not extending to get the football, uh, but instead past his frame. So so. Um, Let's see if we can get a good still image of that right there. Um, you can see his arms uh, catching the ball um, beyond him, if you will, and giving the defender a chance to really knock that ball out. Uh, one way or another, that's what happens. I don't know if, if uh, Miles just drops the football um, or if it's actually knocked out, but he needs to extend his uh, hands here and catch the ball, and if possible, uh, use his body to shield um, so the defender can't come through him. Uh, my sense in watching this, too, is that he is a bit slow from the break. In other words, he's turning to find a football yet again uh, coming out of that break. It looks like he slows just a little bit. Again, kind of a stop and start instead of a one steady motion uh, to the middle of the field. I like this route um, Miles runs here. Does a good job selling the quick out and then runs a return. And he's not targeted here. He's not even really looked at, you know. But um, these are the kinds of things I, I expect us to try and get uh, work to him to get him involved next year. Uh, these kind of routes, you know, you can see there's a good bit of separation there and some room to run, perhaps. But they set uh, uh, DBs up later in the game. I think this is another instance of, of Boykin not being in sync with the quarterback and, and vice versa. You see him uh, Titans drop in this cover three. He rounds this out a good bit, but he's open at the sticks. Um, you see the quarterback kind of read to the opposite side over here um, to the bottom of your screen initially. Comes off of that, kind of seemingly misses Boykin altogether, ends up uh, uh, looking to the flat. So really not uh, a consideration in this route either. And you can see he's at the, at the sticks here. If the quarterback sees him uh, with time in the pocket, he's got time to hit him. Um, so... I think ultimately this just speaks to chemistry and uh, he and the quarterback working together a lot more this offseason. I do think that Miles would be a, an effective slot or a big slot receiver, and I'd like to see him uh, used more out of the slot in 2020. Miles only had 13 catches last year. He had uh, averaged 15 yards per catch, though, so he did have some downfield uh, success. This is him at the bottom of our screen. See the middle of the field safety take take a uh, few fateful uh, missteps toward the line of scrimmage there, and that's just enough for him to get um, by him. Interestingly, this is this boot that the Ravens run here is really just an effort to get uh, Andrews on the cross here, or free Lamar to run. And to Lamar's credit, he does find the receiver downfield, but that is not his first read. Um, you can see that clearly from from this angle. Uh, you also see uh, Miles do a nice job finding this football, making sure he comes back to it. 